they could be the starting point for more serious negotiations as the matter continues. Shannon, back to you. All right, Steve Santani with the latest. Thank you, Steve. Well, are these short-term extensions causing long-term problems for the economy? Democratic Congressman Jim McDermott of Washington is a senior member of the House Ways and Means Committee. He joins us now live from Seattle. Congressman, welcome. Good morning, Shannon. All right, there's a lot going on in Capitol Hill and trying to find some way forward in funding the rest of the current fiscal year. Uh, you made comments that the GOP is okay with creating chaos, that they actually uh, don't necessarily want the economy to shape up because they can use it to defeat the president in 2012. Do you really think that's what's going on with your colleagues? Absolutely. There's no question uh, Mitch McConnell has said it directly on television again and again. He's not changed his mind. The goal is to bring down the president. Now, how they do it, they don't obviously want to go at him directly. They want to do it by creating a situation in which the economy does not recover. We've got evidence this week that things are getting better, but the Republicans continue to talk about cutting spending and deregulating as though that was the only answer there was in the world. And it simply is not going to be solved in two weeks. They're going to continue that two week, two week, two week business until they uh, get themselves down to the day when we have to lift the uh, debt limit. And I think they'll even push even harder at that point. Those are some pretty serious allegations to make. I mean, honestly, you believe that GOP members of Congress would rather uh, turn the U.S. economy upside down than resolve it? The cuts that they made the other day in the House bill were the most irresponsible piece of legislation I have seen in 40 years of my experience in government. They made wild cuts that would cut programs that really the American people expect to be effective. American people want clean air. They want clean water. These guys say, let's wipe out the EPA. Now, that simply is not good government. It is just whacking for, this, for the sake of whacking. It has no thinking going into how you make reductions. We are, there's no Democrat who doesn't believe that there's got to be some reductions. But there is a belief that it should be done in a reasonable way. And the Senate's put out a proposal. And I expect the Republicans will reject it out of hand because it's not enough. But it is enough for this year. We can get to things next year. We had eight years of wild Republican spending under Bush. And now people say, why is it all fixed in one year? That's simply not sensible. Well, let's talk about the fact that last year when you were putting together fiscal budget 2011, which never did come together, Democrats did control both houses of Congress and the White House. So how much are Democrats to blame now that you're in this piecemeal situation where you're having to fund every couple of weeks because the budget was never resolved months ago when it should have been? Well, Mr. McConnell used the filibuster as he used for the entire two years that President Obama has been in office. He used the filibuster to prevent a serious discussion on anything. And if you would stop filibustering and have a public debate, you could arrive at some median point between the Democrats and the Republicans, but they don't want to solve it. They simply want to have the chaos go on and use this kind of meat ex approach of cutting $60 billion across the board with no thought of what the impact of those are. Well, we certainly hope there will be common ground for both parties and lawmakers who care. We know first and foremost about this country, and Congressman, we know you are one of those, so we thank you very much for your time today. You're welcome. We hope for the American people. We certainly do.